Kate Darcy Show with Discover Ireland Summer Breaks. Find us on Facebook and plan your getaway with friends in Ireland today. This is Living. Call the Punisher Pendred. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Did I see a quote of saying that your win on Saturday night is going to change your life? Uh, it has indeed. Yeah. In what way? Um, well, I made more money, basically, uh, on Saturday night than I have in my whole life uh, put together. I, it was basically the fruition of six or seven years hard work getting to this point. I got to the, the biggest stage in in my sport and uh, came out with a big victory and, uh, and a bonus as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, UFC uh, is the sort of the brand name uh, for MMA, which is mixed martial arts. Are there other people who do MMA as well? Yeah, they are indeed. Uh, the UFC is basically an organisation which hosts MMA events and uh, MMA... The you know, UFC is the number one organisation in the world, but I've competed in MMA for professionally for about five years, and I've been working my way up to get to to the UFC, which is like the premiership, I suppose you could uh-huh. call it, right. of MMA. Now, for people who don't know about it, it, it is what it says on the tin: um, mixed martial arts. So, what are the various martial arts that are incorporated into uh, MMA? Well, it's basically limitless. You can you can train any martial art, but um, the the primary ones trained would be Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, kickboxing boxing, um, a bit of taekwondo and judo as well. They'd be the primary ones trained. Okay. What happens for you now? You, you, you've made more money on, in one night than you have in your entire lifetime. You're, yeah. You're 26. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Well, I, you know, I've been struggling for, for a long time to get to here. I've, you know, you don't make any money really in this game outside of the UFC. I've, you know, make, making this, like I said, has changed my life. I, I owed two months rent uh, coming up to this fight. My landlord was chasing me for that. I owed nearly 2,000 euros to electricity. They kept calling me every day um, telling me they were going to cut me off every day driving home. I was thinking, I was just, I was wondering was I going to get home and be able to turn my lights on. So, you know, but I believed I was going to get to this point. I knew I would, I would, I would get to the top and I would be successful. So, um, What's your weight division? I, I generally fight at welterweight, but at the moment I'm, I'm fighting at middleweight, which is one above that. Right, and uh, I'm looking to uh, drop down uh, weight class in my next fight now. Okay, and who did you beat on Saturday night? I beat an American guy called Mike King. We actually both knew each other and were very good friends. We uh, competed on a, on a show on on Fox in America called The Ultimate Fighter, which is hosted by the UFC, which is um, a reality show where uh, 32 guys uh, enter a competition to to um, you know, a, w- a winner's crown and given a, a lucrative contract with the with the UFC. Right. I'm looking at you now. You're you're pretty bed up there. Mm-hmm. What, what, talk us through your injuries from Saturday night. Uh, well, I've no no major injuries. I've a few scratches on my nose and and a, a black eye. Yeah. Um, so th- there was no no serious damage taken. Right. And what's your, the most serious injury you've had over the years? Um. I have had no serious in- injuries while, I, while I'm doing MMA. I, I, I played rugby all through my teenage years and I had more ser- yeah. serious injuries playing rugby than I have <laughs> uh, competing in MMA. So I, I know MMA, there's a, there's a bit of a stigma about it. It's, it's only a relatively new sport and people are, are just kind of getting to understand what the sport is and uh, some of the misconceptions are that it's a very brutal and dangerous sport, but it's actually not as, as bad as, as people realise. And, mm. the, you know, the number one thing you're told before a fight and the aim of the game basically is to keep yourself safe at all times um, as soon as you don't keep yourself safe the referee will stop the fight and that's what he tells every fighter before the fight the reason I took a bit of damage is because I was I became close to I, I, I uh, my win on Saturday I nearly lost uh, I got to a point where it looked like I, I was going to be finished but I, but I actually just gathered myself together and, and uh, actually turned the fight around. Did you win on a, on a submission or a knockout or on points? Yeah, I submit, submitted so the guy. He, he, so he said enough or did the referee stand in? Stand uh, in? The referee stood in. Right, yeah. okay. Um, you, you were saying to Murray the other day that, that this, is, this is the purest form of sport. Mm-hmm. That this is, we're sort of built for this. Yeah, humans. well, that's 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 my take. Go on. on. Um, well, you know, you you look at how big of uh, um, sport it plays a part in everyone's life, and the the reason being is because there's a competitive nature in human beings, and the reason we have a, that competitive nature is because it's a survival instinct. When we were when we were living in caves, we competed for everything. We competed for food. We competed for shelter. We competed for a mate. And we didn't compete by playing a game of basketball or playing a game of, of snooker. 
we competed in a form, forms of combat. So so essentially, combat is the uh, the purest form of competition, right. in my opinion. Well, if, if 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 you know, I had to fight somebody for say, I don't know, uh, a moose or something like that, or a <laughs> pig, I'd go, look, you have the pig, I'll go and pick some berries. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, that's no, fair enough. But yeah, but uh, I. I I looked, and I was saying it this morning, um, uh, I looked at Connor's, uh, wh- Connor's fight, and he was up against Diego Brando, uh, Connor McGregor. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the fight, uh, Diego was curled up in the fetal position on, on the mat, mm-hmm. on the floor of the octagon. And uh, Connor was, the only way to describe it is beating the head off him. Yeah. Uh, and he got, I don't know the exact number, four or five punches in mm-hmm. before the referee um, stepped in. I found it very disturbing. Okay. I just found I found it very violent and very disturbing. All right. Well, when when uh, Diego Brando curled up in the fetal position there, and uh, Connor threw four or five punches, the the referee immediately stopped yeah. it because he saw that Diego was not intelligently defending himself okay. anymore. So the the fight was stopped before any damage or any serious injury occurred. Now, half an hour after that fight, the press conference uh, occurred with. with um, Myself and a few of the other the fighters um, that that were awarded bonuses, and Diego Brando was there, and he, there was not there, there was no uh, injuries. Mm. He, he was completely fine, and uh, <laughs> the, 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 that just shows you that the, the referee had stopped the fight before anything seriously had seriously uh, mm. happened. You know? How do you feel about because you're a bright guy? Um, how do you feel about people paying money and you know rich people been sort of you know they're <clears throat> I suppose sponsoring the sport etc to watch you and another man fight to the point of you know like okay the no injuries no you haven't broken your nose or anything like that but you're wearing dark glasses you have a big black eye yeah you, you, your your nose look like you've fallen off a bike at speed you know <laughs> um the, the, how do you feel about that how do you, do you well, think about that um well I, how, how would you how do i feel about people that go pay to watch f- uh, 22 guys run after a ball on a, on a pitch it's the same sort of uh, well I don't think it is but, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean I, d- I don't really it's a sport people yeah. go people pay and go to see a sport why do you um, think it's 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 so popular I, 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 read, I read here and there's good publicity around it obviously it's <coughs> the fastest growing sport mm. now that could mean that you know there's just it, it, from a very low base but why do you think it's it's growing in popularity well no it, it is definitely the fastest growing sport yeah. in the world it's it's overtaken boxing as, as the number one pay-per-view seller in the United States and um, for for the reasons I've, I've outlined it's such a diverse sport in the fact that you know it, it's it's martial arts but there's no um, there's no limitations to it you, you can train any f- sort of mar- uh, martial art and put it together um, and you know pe- people can uh relate to to fighting it's an international sport you know rugby is only big in certain countries ireland australia the uk uh france but it's not big in the states or in africa mm. but whereas mixed martial arts is competitive combat and a- anyone around the world can understand what's going on so you've you no headgear no uh, no hand no is there gloves no gloves there's gloves yeah. there's gloves yeah. but they're not the what what how do they compare to boxing gloves they are 4 ounce gloves whereas in professional boxing i think they're 8 or 10 ounce gloves okay they're, so there's the uh the fingers are free in order to uh use your fingers for the submission part of the the grappling part of the game right yeah so you grapple you you have to you can if you have your opponent on the ground yeah what, what you can hold them in a sort of a, a wrestling position is yeah it? well basically uh, when when the fight is on the ground ma- the majority of the time one the fighters are looking to finish the fight using a submission where you you, you would get them uh, in a hold where the other fighter will submit by tapping right um, and, and again that happens the fighter will submit before any damage is done before any injuries occur and this is real this isn't wwf sort of <laughs> choreographed Pantomime stuff. This no, is real. No, this is this is one hundred percent. But you say you, you were friendly with your opponent. Was it Mike King? Is it Mike King? Yeah, you were friendly with him, and yet the two of you were in there. Yeah, the, it's the, it's the game we're in, and and it's the sport we're in. And I remember when the fight was announced, when the UFC first came to us and uh, told myself and Mike we'd be fighting each other. We yeah, uh, we were texting each other, and we kind of said, "Look, this is yeah, this is this is what's happening." And um, 
we'll talk to each other on the other side and you know we were friends on Facebook and, and followed each other on Twitter and stuff and we unfriended each other and and uh, just because you know when I'm going training every day and then I come home to relax I don't want to be going, going onto my social media and seeing what my opponent is yeah. is up to that day so so just for for the couple of months that the fight was was uh, upcoming uh, we kind of ceased our relationship and then on Saturday night we went out there we, we had a great fight we ended up having fight of the night and um, getting a bonus because of it and then afterwards we went and we had a drink together and uh, we're actually hoping to meet up today and right. um, go have some dinner because then Conor McGregor say in his press conferences or his weigh in on Friday that he was going to rip his opponent's head off mm-hmm. That that's just bravado, is it? That's that's just bravado. Yeah. And it's, this is the fight game. It's uh, you know, like you 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 talked about WWE there. Um, it this is one hundred percent real. The sport is one hundred percent real. But there is an aspect of you know promoting the fight and, and, and yeah, and yeah. The, the th- getting the, getting column inches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I wouldn't say that now. But no, but you have to. Yeah. You have to because yeah, obviously the PR has been brilliant for it, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. The UFC yeah. are the best in the world. One of the best sports in the world, Ray. Much more regulated than boxing. The cockfighting stigma is for an for uneducated spectators, says Declan. And uh, I'm with you. That fighting was disturbing. It's not a sport, and to think people paid good money um, for not even two minutes of it. So, in in professionals, there's five five minute rounds unless there's a submission. Is that it? Uh, there's three five three minute five minute rounds, rounds right? Unless, is it? unless it's a, a title fight or a main event fight, and then it's so five, it was, fi- yeah, five minutes. So for yeah. Connors, it was five. But just um, in terms of as someone was saying that they aren't really into it, you know, um, with, with skiing and snowboarding, did you know there's actually forty deaths annually right. when it comes to skiing or snowboarding? Now I know that if in in that hypothetical sense, because this obviously would never happen. If the Winter Olympics was to ever be held here, there would not be one um, negative thing to s- mm. spoke about in the media about uh, skiing or snowboarding because there's 40 people die annually over... In the, in the 20 year history of the UFC not one person has died not only has not one person ever died in the history of the UFC not one person has ever been seriously hurt the, the most serious injury that has ever occurred in the UFC is a leg break and that has only ever happened two or three times you watch rugby every weekend and you will see a game where someone someone breaks a leg and, and yeah. unfortunately as well sometimes there's spinal injuries and neck injuries where people are paralysed that has never happened in the history of the UFC I suppose for me it's, it's sort of the, 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 the unbridled violence of it um, yeah. you know that's 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 what I found disturbing uh, I found it hard to watch the UFC I've seen martial arts but punching someone repeatedly in the head goes beyond entertainment not my cup of tea and sure don't the rugby players be smashed to bits after Six Nations games somebody um, and the episode of Friends where Monica's boyfriend competed in the UFC did serious damage to the credibility of the USC it was portrayed as a no holds barred free for all that's where that expression <laughs> comes from it comes from wrestling you know that no holds barred yeah, yeah. no holds yeah, barred doesn't yeah. it because that, that means there's there's everything is allowed, isn't it? Exactly, no holds yeah. barred, yeah. Uh, couldn't be further from the truth. And uh, congratulations to Connor. He doesn't sound like his usual confident self today. Yeah, you're a bit sorry, you're a bit battered. A bit. Well, I'm not Connor. I'm Cahill. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Cahill. Sorry, sorry. That's right. That's, that's, sorry. Um, that's why the, that's their mistake. Sorry, but you okay. sound a bit. I, I've never met you before, but well, uh, if they were thinking uh, I'm uh, saying I'm not saying this Connor. Gonna, it's that's, I'm yeah, Cahill. you're Cahill. Yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, how long does it take to recover now after? Uh, are you fully recovered now? I'm fully recovered. Yeah. Like I said, beside, besides a couple of scratches on my nose and a black eye, there, there is not one thing wrong with right. me. Uh, for precautionary measures, DOC bring all fighters to the, to the hospital afterwards to, you know, to be checked. It's a very very safely reg- regulated sport. But that's and for concussion. Not, yeah, there's not one thing wrong with me. Um, uh, Ray, I was at the UFC and the U2 over the weekend. Can I just shout out to everyone there because it was the best atmosphere I've ever experienced. McGregor and all the Irish boys might as well had an extra man in the octagon with them. Uh, fantastic. And I watched the fight on Saturday. It did make me feel a little uneasy, but so did the fight in the Leinster final yesterday. At least in the MMA, you were expecting your opponent to hit you. I find the cheap uh, sly knocks dished out in the GA matches worse than the MMA, says Ed. And I'm a 33-year-old woman who watched the fight for the first time on Saturday night and enjoyed it and admired the talent and agility of the participants. As for you saying uh, they were friends beating each other up, all the Leinster lads play with the Munster lads on the Irish squad and they hit each other harder than any UFC. And wished I had discovered MMA in my teens, my dream job, says somebody else. Um, and what, what, that's what I was going to ask you just before we, we leave it. When you, who is the audience? Who, who makes up the audience? When you look there around the O2 on Saturday night... Well, I don't know them personally. No, no, I mean, people. what's are they mainly men, women, what age group? Um, well, they say the predominant um, p- 
people that watch the UFC are males between 18 and 35, but there was plenty, plenty of women. I'd say, I'd say 30, 30 percent um, yeah. on upwards were, were women, and there was people of all ages there. So uh, yeah, that was great to see. I disagree with you on the UFC, but uh, respect your what you're saying. I watched it with my dad and brother on Saturday nights, uh, and my dad, while he enjoyed the atmosphere and some the fighting, he found some of the submissions and the punching on the ground hard to watch. In my opinion, I thought it was one of the greatest Irish sporting events in the last few years. The crowd, the atmosphere, standard of fighting was incredible. I felt very proud to be Irish, and it felt good to see athletes of our own country competing and winning at the highest level. We had four Irish fighters on the night, and they all won. My best mate, brother, Carl Pendred, was fighting before McGregor, and he showed incredible determination and spirit to win when it seems he was going to lose after the first round. Ole, 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 sound around the stadium. All fighters high five members of the crowd and thank them for their support on numerous occasions. I don't have, do I have a name there for you so you'd know them. <laughs> D.H. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and one more I can understand your interpretation of the fight you saw but if you understand all the disciplines involved and the high level of training required by these guys I think you could appreciate it a bit more for centuries people wondered which martial arts was the best and the UFC and MMA answered those questions you have to be a good Thai boxer and be good on the ground grappling, wrestling MMA is the fastest growing sport in the world for a reason congratulations to all um, so I'll have to go home and think about the comparison to rugby it's, yeah. For me, it's very different. But for you, you don't okay. seem to, uh, you don't see any h- huge difference. Well, the other thing is that um, you know rugby players play games every week, where we would only fight three to four times a year. Yeah. And and the the amount of uh, damage that and I'm I'm not criticizing rugby at all. I'm a big fan. My friends are rugby players. I'm just saying that that doesn't get much criticism yeah. at all. And you know. The, the, the the impact that these guys are taking week in week out compared to what we take when you add it up is is nothing. Yeah. Connor, congratulations again. Connor, oh, that's my name. Yes. Yeah. See, I was You'll get it one day, right? No, 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 no. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I actually, in my head, I was grappling with the two of them. And, uh, Connor's written down here. Call, uh, apologies there. Don't, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, Will wants me to ask you about the dolphin. So I tell you what, <laughs> Carl, stay with us and I'll ask you about the dolphin okay. after this. The Ray Darcy Show with Discover Ireland Family Breaks. Find us on Facebook and plan your family getaway in Ireland today. This is living. Well, if you had different names, like Carl and Connor, come on, if you just had different names, <laughs> it'd be easier for me. Uh, so, Carl, tell us the story about saving the dolphin. <laughs> okay, this uh, the, this, I always get asked about this. This is the warm, fuzzy side of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was at a wedding down in Dune Bag in County Clare um, a couple of months back, and uh, the next day I was just walking off... Um, the cobwebs from from the night before on the beach with my girlfriend and uh, we saw a bit of commotion down at the shore so we went down to see what was happening and there was a small dolphin had been washed ashore and someone was trying to push it back it back out and it kept getting washed back in by the waves so I, I went in and, and helped out kept trying to bring it out and the waves kept bringing it back in and then at one point the waves uh, the, wa- the waves brought the, the dolphin into a, a shallow area which was quite rocky and he got stuck and he was actually making a bit of a crying noise and I, and I saw that there'd be no other option than to pick him up and, and bring him out to uh, an area which was deeper. So that's what he did and, and there was a snap taken on me which <laughs> kind of went viral. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's right, it's so, like from one of those kids' movies, you know? Those I know, ones. yeah. There was a lot of people asking me, was it real? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, was, it, was it a staged event? But the, what I always say is, my, my friend said it was staged that my T-shirt would have been taken off and the abs would have been <laughs> there, so. that's, that, that's how you can tell it's authentic. <laughs> Because <laughs> he, he left, he left the t-shirt yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carl, come across very well. Uh, great future, future in the sport. Keep the Irish flag flying, um, and uh, check out a book called The Fighter's Heart. Uh, it might change your view. Somebody has suggested already. That was by who? Who was that by? He was a UFC fighter. He's written a book about his experiences. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't remember oh, Daniel yeah, something. Yeah. I think uh, I was disturbed by the fight on Saturday night, but Carl has come across as a really nice, intelligent guy. Congrats to him on his win. Delighted for him. Uh, there you go. You've won somebody over. Uh, brilliant. Uh, Carl, thanks very much, and we will put that picture of you and the dolphin up. <laughs> 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 That's going to be there forever, isn't it? Yeah, That's it. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever our personal views about UFC, Kyle comes across as a really nice guy and intelligent um, uh, promoter of the sport. 
Uh, that's it from us. Thanks very much to Will, uh, to Maraid, to Pam outside, and again uh, to Carl. I have to say, Carl, 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 not Connor, Connor, Connor. <laughs> uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow at nine. Louise on the way. The Ray Darcy Show on Today FM. Show on Today FM. Show on Today FM. Show on Today FM. Show on Today FM.